bag. Am I in love with it though? I would just say I'm obsessed with it. I have more of a lust for this bag than true love. Hey guys, welcome to my channel. I'm Jess. Thanks so much Candy for creating this tag uh, called five bags that I have fallen in love with. And thank you Super Dake for tagging me to do this video. I had a little think about this topic this morning and I asked myself if I am currently in love with any bags. I'm gonna be honest, I don't think it's necessarily possible to completely fall in love with a bag. I have gone through so many bags. I don't really find that I get overly attached to like a material object. Not that that makes me a better person or anything. It's just that I've realized over the years that buying a handbag is not going to change my life. And I think that a lot of the time in the past where I've fantasized about owning a handbag, I imagined it kind of changing my life or just you know oh if only I had that you know sac de jour I could be a fancy Parisian fashionable Instagram girl or oh if only I had that Birkin you know I could go to on the weekend and just you know walk around in the shops and and I don't know like go on a holiday with my Birkin but guys I buy the bag and then the next day I have to go to work and I just feel like sometimes I get caught up in the fantasy of owning a handbag and once I have the bag I realize that maybe I don't know I get I just I get over it and then I want to buy a new bag because I'm constantly wanting to change my life maybe <laughs> but you know guys I think uh as time goes by I've achieved a lot and I think that you know having a goal to buy a handbag is still a fun thing to have but I don't necessarily fall in love with bags anymore because I know that they can't really give me love back like a person or a friend or even an animal and they're very you can also always replace a bag so even if for example my Lindy got destroyed technically you could get a, an Hermes artisan to remake a Lindy in this color like it is not an irreplaceable thing whereas you know things like a pet or a person like that they are things that are not replaceable so I don't know if it's possible to love a thing but I will say that I have experienced bags in the past that have met me made me dream and definitely in a way put me on a tangent and you know made me strive to um explore certain bags more so definitely earlier on in my handbag collecting days i would say around like 2017 2018 which wasn't really that long ago but i went to japan and i would I fell in love with a Chanel Caviar Mini Square when I went to this store called Amore Vintage. There's also another consignment store in Japan called Vintage Quo or Vintage Ku. And they have this amazing selection of vintage Chanel bags, unlike no other. Uh, prior to going to Japan, I did visit the Chanel boutique a few times and see what bags they have, but then they often don't have, you know, the minis or whatever. And at that time, I was obsessed with the mini. And after seeing this vintage caviar mini square with the 24k hardware preserved and it was just so perfect it honestly like I fell in love with this bag guys like this vintage mini square was absolutely to die for it was selling for over the current retail price of Chanel minis but now I think it would actually be worth a lot more but at the time I was just like oh my gosh this is so much money for a bag but I I don't know, vintage bags for some reason sometimes inspire me more than modern day bags. I feel like especially with Chanel, I often imagine what it would have been like to buy like a bag in like 1991 in the Chanel boutique. Like, can you imagine what the stores would have looked like? Like with all those beautiful 24K like bags, like what did the, what did the VM look like? Like what did the windows look like? Like I really wish that I was old enough to experience this era of Chanel, but sometimes when even when I worked at a consignment store, I would sometimes come across like older Chanel pieces and they would be in the original packaging with the original receipt and just the whole experience of these bags was completely different, particularly prior to like 2004. Another bag that really opened up my eyes, I would say I, I discovered 
it was earlier this year when I was working at Purse Affair, someone consigned their Chanel Classic Flap black I don't know the black ones really get me sometimes it was black caviar with gold hardware and it had the original packaging receipt um all the like little bits and bobs original tissue paper and the receipt um it was of a Chanel store that used to be in Melbourne but it's now in a different location and just seeing that old receipt I think it was from around 2006 or 7 seeing that receipt seeing the the Chanel classic flap it, the quality of it was so so incredible compared to like these days like the whole vibe of the bag was so mesmerizing and just having that old packaging as well and the old camellia it really took me to a place guys like I really and also seeing the price like I was shocked like it was only like 2,000 Australian dollars or something crazy like you know compared to now it's like 14,000 but just seeing the price and seeing the way it was so immaculately presented in the box, I just like wonder like what has happened to, happened to, like really made me question what has happened to luxury because I feel like luxury used to be so much more exclusive and less mainstream and just a lot more special in a way. So I, I find that I dream more with vintage bags because they just seem like they're from a different time and I fall in love with vintage pieces sometimes like this. Also, another time, honestly, I fell in love with ba a lot of bags when I went to Japan. I went to another Amor Vintage store in Japan and they had the uh, Louis Vuitton Cherry um, Sack Retro. Was it the Sack? No, it wasn't a Sack Retro. It was like a, a Deauville, I think. And I saw it in real life. I tried it on and I don't know, that cherry bag really made me dream. After that, I was on a mission to buy a Louis Vuitton cherry bag. And uh, just the, uh, I don't know, I feel like the early 2000s Louis Vuitton was also just a completely, luxury was so different back then. And I really wish I was old enough to shop in the boutiques back then and have like the old brown packaging and like the whole Marc Jacobs era really inspires me. So seeing that bag and with the exotic trim, I really wanted to buy it. And honestly, it's probably like my favorite Louis Vuitton bag of all time. I did go on a tangent when I went back to Australia. Um, a few years after, I collected a lot of Murakami pieces, cherry pieces. And, you know, after owning a lot of them, I realized that they... I don't think that they're going to last a lifetime. Unfortunately, a lot of Louis Vuitton pieces, like the Vachetta gets old, you have to replace it. Like, especially with the multicolor and the cherries, they can chip off as you wear them. And they just, to me, they're like beautiful works of art. But I don't know. I started becoming obsessed with like more Chanel bags and Hermes. And just, I, I just kind of go into um phases. But I definitely, that cherry bag inspired me a lot when I saw it in Japan and it's a bag that I still actually dream about because it's just so iconic to me and it's also very rare like I've never seen one in Australia and I think the most interesting bags are like the ones that you hardly ever see so I definitely fell in love with that bag um another bag that I probably fell in love with they're usually bags that I don't own I like to think about bags that I don't own for some reason because I feel like they might change my life if I got it one day or maybe my life would be different once I obtain that bag which I know is sad to think about but I guess that's just what I think about in my head but a bag that I've fallen in love with recently I saw on this Instagram called Hayashi Handicraft and this Instagram really inspired me to start learning how to make leather bag charms and I did get an online course but I um, still have to practice it so I have to buy leather and stuff to um, practice next year but anyways it's this business the way she makes these bag charms and she has so many special order Hermes bags on her Instagram and the one that I've fallen in love with the most is this Chev I think it's Chev Black with Rosakura Birkin oh guys if I ever got that bag I would pass out like it is just so beautiful definitely like the special order Hermes bags just take my breath away there are so many and then I see on Finkelpuff and a lot of Japanese resale sites that I just, if I was a millionaire, guys, I would honestly just buy so many because I just think the color combinations are really inspiring to me. I just feel like they're so unique. Some of the the different leathers, the hardware, like I feel like Hermes bags, they just, they age really well. They're so classic. They're just so 
unique sometimes and I just I don't know I'm obsessed so this bag I dream about it every day ever since I saw it I even I, I've told you guys this a million times but I have a special order album on my phone that sometimes when I'm sad I just stare at it and it gives me a kick of adrenaline because I'm just like so excited by all the special order combinations and sometimes at night I like think about what special order I would create and it really stresses me out because I can't decide but I think it would be like black with rose sakura sometimes I think it should be black with like hot pink but now I'm thinking like definitely like a light pink with black is a little bit prettier so I fell in love with that bag basically yeah that is definitely a dream bag for me but yeah I I'm okay to not own it I just like thinking about it you know uh I would say another bag that I've fallen in love with um is well any of my bags have I fallen in love with any of my bags mm, I don't know well I guess recently for like I don't know because I, I buy and sell bags a lot to be honest guys so I don't feel like I'm overly attached to any of my bags and I feel like if, if it's true love you would never sell the bag so I can't say that I'm completely in love with any of my bags, which is a bit strange, but I think it's because I've owned a lot in a short amount of time and that they don't really have that sentimental value to me. Um, as maybe, because like even, you know how people buy bags to remember a special occasion or achievement or something, I just feel like for me, like, you know, going to Japan or going, you know, achieving my 30th birthday or whatever, I don't need a thing for that either. I can just remember that I turned 30. Like, I just, people often don't really give me gifts, like big gifts like that. And I don't often buy things as to symbolize a moment in my life for some reason. I don't know why I don't, maybe if I turn 50, I'll buy like a Birkin and I'll be like, yeah, because it's my birthday. But I feel like I'm not that sentimental with things. Maybe if I, you know, got married and got a wedding ring yeah that means something but I don't know I don't really have anything overly sentimental in terms of handbags for some reason so I will say I was really obsessed with this gypsy air though um on the looks at forward consignment page when this first came up I was like obsessed with the color and I was thinking about it for weeks and I literally stalked looks at forward like every day for a month that it was up there to watch how it was going to be reduced because I thought it would sell out but like no one bought it because it was an amazing price for a gypsy ear because gypsy ears are really expensive in the store and I was just like stalking it literally every day I was obsessed with this bag and then after about a month I decided to make an offer and they accepted it and I bought it and I'm still obsessed with it I think the color is very captivating so that's about it with this bag am i in love with it though i would just say i'm obsessed with it i have more of a lust for this bag than true love i don't yeah i don't know guys i don't know if i'm truly in love with anything this is really hard to think about um so i guess i'll like round it down to one more bag oh, i don't know but for some reason i'm kind of in love with this brown kelly i don't really know why but Again, like, it's from the year 2000, which makes me really think about, can you imagine, like, someone buying this in the year 2000 in the Hermes Boutique? Like, can you even imagine what the Hermes Boutique would have looked like in the year 2000? Like, that is 22 years ago. This bag actually came from a consignment store in Japan called Ginza Shioma, and I don't, I know, I'm not saying it properly, but the, um, person who bought this from that consignment store then consigned it at Persifair and I bought it and I just think that this bag like the leather is really beautiful I love how it has like the gold detailing the stitching um the size I just think that this is a very classic Kelly and the fact that it looks this good for a 22 year old bag also I don't know I just feel like it's very astonishing to be honest so it inspires me and it definitely seeing these vintage Hermes bags like is this vintage I don't know but I do have like an older one that Kelly is 31 years old like seeing these older Hermes bags definitely made me dream and made me think about what it must have been like like 30 years ago 40 years ago 50 years ago and I love learning new things about handbags I think that's the most thing like sometimes there are bags I see and it really inspires me to find out more so I definitely went on a tangent with you know you know Murakami Louis Vuitton and then I went on a tangent with vintage Chanel and now I'm really excited to explore Hermes like there's so many things I need to learn and I think Hermes is the most complicated brand to learn things from but 
I don't know, it just gives me life learning about it. I'm so excited. Um, I, oh, I got this book the other day and there's so many like old window display pictures in here from like different eras like this one is from 1990 and you can see there's like a bleed here in oh it's not a bleed it's like this bag of, i've actually seen this sold on ebay as well i love ebay for research there's so many weird bags on ebay you can just like research and find out about but there's this really interesting bag with like a trunk style at the bottom and i'm thinking this color is rouge vif like my kelly because I think Rouge Viv was like a bit of a like a vintage colour. And look at this um, hack or yeah I think it's a hack bag. That one that looks like a Birkin but it was like the original design in croc. I don't know I just love finding out about this stuff and like all the things that they did in the past. Like look at this giant Kelly with this design on it. I wonder if that really existed. I'm sure that it did. Like, can you imagine the people who were buying these bags or the people who were even buying, like, this house decor? Like, some of the tables at Hermes especially, or, like, the even, like, the porcelain pieces are really just very... It's, like, a whole lifestyle. Like, it's just very fascinating to me. Anyways, I just love finding out things that happened in the past mainly, and I'm not as inspired, to be honest, by modern-day bags. I think it's because I've worked in luxury stores, and to me... It's just like fast fashion at this point, like especially the way that the bags are stored out the back, like it's just all thrown out the back and they're so expensive now. And I feel like bags these days, like, I don't know, like Chanel bags, especially like the heart shaped bag, although I love the idea of it, like it's not that exclusive. Like there's so many people who, who bought it, not shading anyone who has it. Obviously it's a very cute bag, but it's just all over the pre-love market. Like, I just think that brands these days, they just release stuff like like it doesn't mean anything anymore. And like the the quality and like the, the dream is gone. Like it's kind of like everything is like trying to be vintage or like trying to capture the luxury that used to be prevalent or that, you know, that secrecy or that, that mysteriousness about luxury that is now so unmysterious thanks to social media and I guess even YouTube or even me just talking about it um the allure is kind of not the same as it used to be so I love to be honest I fall in love with bags that capture the allure of luxury that once was but you know you never know as time goes by a lot of people might start getting less into luxury and maybe that whole maybe things will slow down again and we'll go back to that you know just how bags used to be like better prices and you know real well-made exclusive pieces like I don't know guys but anyways that was a bit of a rambly video today thanks Candy for the inspiration and th thanks Jacob for tagging me um, I would also love to tag I'll tag three people I'll tag Devin Christopher I'm gonna tag Hello Catwalk City and I'm also gonna tag tag Clara Zila to do this video um, if you want if you feel like it if you want to do vlogmas maybe this will help so yes uh, thanks for watching and I'll talk to you on my next one Bye!